All right, you are still watching Ways. In 2020, the Medical Science Liaison Society established International Medical Science Liaison Day to raise awareness of the importance of the medical science um, liaison role in pharmaceutical, biotechnology, medical device, and other companies that employ them. Their role ultimately improves patients' lives. Ah. <sighs> So there's something that my sister is doing in the U.S. because she's trying to switch careers. Yeah. And she's studying something called um, CRM. So they are like almost like liaison officers, you know, for between the pharmaceuticals. And, you know, it's such an interesting role because, again, some of them are the ones that would approve and test and say, okay, yes, this um, product is good to go to. you know and all of that they've done the test they've done all of those things it's not small work home. <laughs> so what when you know sometimes when they're talking i just look at them i just shake my head i say now wow we are far away in this country because now it's not even just the medical personnel not your doctors your nurses and all of that so for instance if m and b or what or m's or whatever mm -hmm. companies mm -hmm. They want to produce who are the people that the government is, you know, saying that, okay, these are companies that are known that ensures that these quality checks are done, you know, between pharmaceutical companies. And I don't think we have them. I don't know. Mm. I don't know if we have them. You know, NAVDAC is supposed no, to be yeah, but NAVDAC the agency. Is. But you see, it's different. There's, mm -hmm. the, there's, the, there's the equivalent of NAVDAC in the U.S. Yeah. But these ones are companies that like send quality yeah, their quality. Companies. So they go... Mm. The work they do is quite intense, yeah. mm. quite intense, you know. So new drugs, they're coming in, they're testing, they're doing so many things, doing a lot of and gathering data in the process. So it's not just saying they're doing it, mm -hmm. they're documenting. It's a lot of process. Interesting. Mm. And they, they pay them a lot of money for that. Of and they're they not in the medical field. They're not doctors, they're not in nurses. So people now... And tra traveling outside the country, you're no longer even really interested Trying about. To be doctors and no need. Anymore. You see those kind of roles that That's are. That's what they wanted to. Yeah, you know, because they pay. It they pay. I mean, it's an important role. Yeah, yeah they pay That's heavily for that. Okay, so who are we starting with? Let me see, Chinelo. Let me go with you first. Okay, so when I saw this um, headline, I was a bit taken aback, but then I now think God, okay, it's just in two states, right? So I next hold. I next to hold supplementary elections in Kebi and Adamawa on April 15th. I saw it first as annex to hold supplementary elections in states. So I asked myself, what do they mean by supplementary elections? Is this what, does this mean that we're not going to go back and collect our data all over again? <laughs> is that what they're trying to tell us? But then I saw that it's just in Kebi and, Kebi and um, Adamawa. So the INEC uh, has fixed April 15th for the conduct of all outstanding governorship, national and state assembly supplementary elections. And this was made known in the statesmen statements by um, Festus Okoye, it will be recalled that 26 state governorships have been concluded and winners have been declared. But then after proper review by the commission, they're still going to hold supplementary governorship elections. Well, did they state why? Not necessarily. They just said because they mm. reviewed and then some elections so, were inconclusive. Mm. Yes, I know Adama was inconclusive. Yeah. Uh, of course, they, and the other state kept it. But what I'm saying is that what was the criteria? Because again, I, I, I don't understand the, the inconsistency with INEC. Mm. If you have said that, you know, violence, some of these things that were, were encountered, you yeah. know, and you still went ahead to <laughs> announce results. I just want to know, I'm actually curious, maybe I'll ask, um, ask our guest, what is, the, uh, what is the criteria that was used for this? To say, okay, this... Uh, were the things that they considered and this is why some of these states yeah. were inconclusive and mm. this is why they are holding a supplementary election. Mm -hmm. Let me see what, you know, the, the answer would be. Because again, if you want to cite violence, you want to cite, okay, maybe some local government were not able to vote. We had all of that in some in, of the states that were declared. Some of that state, yeah. yes. Yes. So I don't know why they decided to do it in just the states, but see this INEC matter, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody's tired. Honestly, it's ah, we can't be tired though. Everyone's tired. But then we're talking about our role, Abby. Yes, that's what we're talking today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer. So for me, um, in the headlines, like Jonathan, Nigerians, we yearn for Buhari after leaving office. This is by Sheo Gaba. <laughs> so Sheo Gaba is a senior special um, assistant to the president on media and publicity. And one thing he said is that Nigerian leaders are not loved while in office that we start to yearn from them for them once they've left and he was citing reference to good luck 
Jonathan. So basically, he's saying that once Buhari leaves now and then the new president um, takes over, we'll start missing <laughs> what we're asking for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I asked. I saw a cartoon. <laughs> the cartoon was showing Buhari on, with drip mm. and handing over. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was on business day. They always have some funny Those cartoons. <laughs> you know? And so he was showing Barry with drip and handed over to uh, Tinobu mm. with his own uh, medical conditions. But I said it is well. Mm. Me, I don't even have energy to talk about some of these things. So this story actually caught my attention, given that, again, when we talk about jungle justice and um, this... Um, movie that Linda KG had released, mm. uh, that movie, I cried. And I cried like my eyes were going to pop out. So when I saw this, I just said, oh, wow, not again. So Abia Vigilante kills a 27-year-old over company's missing phone. Now, so the yet-to-be-identified official of the Abia State Vigilante Group had shot uh, and killed a 27-year-old staff member of the Choice Itri. It's an Itri. His name is Izuchuku Mbab. I think that's his name, in Umwai here, the capital of Abia State. Now, according to the reports today, the disease was shot at close range on his lap. Um, that was yesterday, Sunday, resulting in his death. Um, according to them, they said he had arrived into the premises to resume for his normal duties. And when the internal um, auditor summoned the vigilante security guards and demanded his arrest over the disappearance. Now, wait for it of a company-owned Nokia Touch. Uh, really? What? Nokia Touch. <sighs> so it the Vazilios guards were accused of stripping that Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. They stripped him, they beat him into a coma, and they now shot him at close range with a pop-action um, rifle, which mm -hmm. in injured his um, femoral artery. Oh, wow. Now, he was rejected... Um, Sorry, sorry, where he, he was referred to a hospital, I think FMC Umaya for mm. treatment, where he died, just as he was about to be referred to a specialist hospital. Now, this story is actually very heartbreaking, right? Because, first of all, a phone goes missing mm -hmm. in a company, right? No proper due process. I mean, I'm setting up a company and we are putting in so much, like, I'm, I'm just looking at my. <laughs> My, because she's telling me, oh, well, you have to do things the way it's done, global standards, that anybody that comes into your organization, they will not look at it and say, oh, it's a one-man company. We're running, we're trying to run the structure in a way that everything, so they is supposed to be, in the case of theft, yeah. what is the policy document okay. saying? Yeah. You know, then even if it says, okay, well, X, Y, Z, you don't have CCTV cameras in place. You are not even sure that this person was the one that took okay. this phone. Now you now bring in overzealous people. You know how this vigilante can get, right? The worst case scenario would have been to call the police, arrest mm -hmm. the boy, yeah. and get him to confess. And if there's any situation like that, there is a salary that you can remove the money from. How much is a Nokia Touch, for goodness boy, sake? Exactly. You know, that a 27-year-old boy, look at the boy's face. Very you young, know, very, very guy. young, yeah. vibrant, and all of that. He's gone. Now, because of what? You know? So I think... I don't, because there's no more to this story. Because I was looking for more. But the police should arrest the owner of the company. Arrest this internal control or this audit. And this person that is yet to identify, please the identify the person exactly. and arrest the person. Because now, this thing, if we do not keep, what's it called, putting, holding people accountable mm. for their actions, this, con this kind of things will continue. Next time, when something like this happens in another company, mm -hmm. they'll be quick to call the real, um, what's it called, the law enforcement mm -hmm. agencies that are, that are trained to handle such situations. How can this boy just die just like that? So I'll, I'll, I'll really call on the, the Abia State government, right? Even if the family will not take it up, because they will not start to tell you that, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's God's will. I, I don't like all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. They should please take up. At least they've mentioned the name of the eatery. It's the choice eatery. Yeah. They should look for the owners of the company, mm -hmm. right? Look for this person that is the internal control uh, offi yeah. uh, officer. Look for this um, vigilante people and get all of them arrested. Then as at the end of the process, whoever needs to face the, the court should face the court. 
I don't know what the penalty for death is because now this is um, what's it called? A uh, murder. Like we'll take a break. Sad. Very, very sad. Very sad. I'll take a break. Really want to discuss this issue around, you know, how can we as citizens hold our leaders accountable? And, you know, what accountability means for all of us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.